Welcome back to my channel. I'm James. Today we're going to be reviewing and deep diving into Shout Factory's brand new release of Streets of Fire. And this is on 4K Ultra HD with a brand new 4K restoration. Now when this film originally came out in 1984, it wasn't very well received. It wasn't kind of really understood and a lot of people just missed out on it and didn't watch it altogether. Well, it has grown into a massive cult classic film over the years, and since 1984, more and more people have discovered it, and it is one of those films that has a unique place in cinema's history. I'm not gonna say it's the best film as a film itself that I've loved over all time. It's got unique pieces behind it. I really enjoy the musical numbers in it. I think some of the musical numbers and scenes in it are really cool, and I really enjoy that element of it, and I have an appreciation for what they were doing with this film. Though I do have some things to talk about with the rating to kind of explain about that because a lot of people get misconceptions going into this with what the rating is as well, but I'll touch on that a little bit later here. Today I'm going to dive into this and show you the exclusive 4K versus Blu-ray image comparisons that I always do to let you know how this compares to the previous Shout Factory Blu-ray releases that came out in 2018 and 2017. And there's a lot of things I discovered throughout that. At the end, I'll always wrap up my reviews with my review scores to let you know if this is something you should buy if you don't own the previous Blu-ray or if you should upgrade to this if you own any of the previous Blu-rays. So make sure you always stick around to the end of every review. That way you get my total sum up review score of the quality of this total set. Now to start off with here, I'm gonna show you the original Blu-ray native images pulled directly from the Blu-ray. Now this is the 2018-2017 Shout Factory Shout Select Blu-ray release. As always, the images above are always the native images pulled directly from the discs without any of the artificial things your TV or player can do to try to slightly alter them. Now on the original Blu-ray release, it was contrived from a 2K scan and it wasn't done from all of the original camera negatives, so it was just a softer looking image to begin with. Obviously the 2K scan only had so much depth and detail it was even present on that. So the Blu-ray release looked better than any of the previous releases before, but Shout Factory's release still, there was a lot of things that needed repair, lots of blotch, specs, little tears, hairs, just tons of little things that still could have used a better job and a new restoration. Thankfully, for the brand new 4K Ultra HD release by Shout Factory and their Shout Select line, this gets a brand new 4K scan from the original 35mm camera negatives, and they did a brand new 4K restoration on this as well. And that's where you're going to see a big difference in what you see visual wise versus what the original Blu-ray release had. I previously mentioned about all the blots, specs, tears, things like that that were present on the Blu-ray from Shout before. A lot of that's been cleaned up on this, but it's not a perfect picture. So even though the restoration does look miles better than what the previous Blu-ray had on it, you're still going to see some little blots and splotches and things like that throughout it though not nearly as heavy and not nearly as many as the Blu-ray had before. Now there is more details present in this, though there is some slight errors and anomalies I encountered on this release that I'm going to touch on here in a minute. Now, if you decide you want to buy this 4K Ultra HD release or you want to get the previous Blu-ray release after you get done watching this review video, as always I've posted the direct links from Amazon in the description section and as a pinned comment in the comment section below. When you click on those it takes you straight out to Amazon, I've done all the work for you. Clicking on those links never costs you even a penny extra and those are on sale for the same prices everywhere. So make sure if you decide you're going to buy this after watching and hearing my review score, make sure to click on those links I've posted down in the description section and as a pinned comment in the comment section below. Now this new 4K is a native 4K 2160p and it did get a brand new HDR color grading and master. And this does have HDR10 and Dolby Vision on it. Now I will say between the Dolby Vision and the HDR10, there were slight variances between them. I will say the Dolby Vision looked slightly better, but only slightly. I'd say they were both very nice presentations and I think they both had a similar appearance. It's just Dolby Vision had a just slight one up. Now, because of the new 4K scan, the new color grading and the implementation of the Dolby Vision and HDR10 with that new master, it does lend really nicely to the neon colors, which you can easily see in the intro of the film when they're first walking up to the theater and you can see all the neon lights coming off where they're going to watch the first part of the concert and they're walking in there, those neon lights really pop off of the screen and look really good. 
Though, I will say throughout it, there are some scenes where you do notice film grain fluctuations in it, and that's where I said it's not a perfect picture. And I didn't really expect it to be perfect because if you compare it to the previous Blu-ray, the previous Blu-ray had lots of things that just were very poor looking on it that they fixed those on this. Though I will say there is one big error that I did encounter on it. When you're watching the film and you get to the timestamp of right around one hour, six minutes. If you go and watch that scene, so go a little bit before one hour and six minutes, and you watch up to that scene when it hits that one hour, six minute point, you'll notice a scene missing. It skips like just a brief one second of footage is kind of like missing and it jerks for a second. And what it kind of looks like is, is um, the main character obviously is talking to the police officer out in the rain and he's talking and all of a sudden it'll be like this, like he's talking, having a normal conversation. And then it just has a real quick, and what that is, is when they scan this or basically transferred it and put it onto this, a part of the film is just slightly missing. So it just skips ahead and there's a slight little audio hiccup right there where you can just, I mean, you have to listen really hard to hear it. So I am being extremely nitpicky here, but I just want to point this out because a lot of the times people ask me, well, what are the things I see when I'm doing all my exclusive testing that are nitpicky things? So I'm giving you an exact example here so you can see this for yourself. These are one of those nitpicky things that I noticed that is just an error when they were working on this to put it on the disc. It just is missing a brief, and I don't even know if it's a full second, but millisecond of footage that it jumps ahead for a second and it's missing that scene which is why it kind of just has a gap there where the police officer's head just like jerks all of a sudden and that slight very slight audio hiccup um, that's about the only thing I noticed as far as that goes other than like I said you still will see some blots and specks throughout it because the restoration work they did on this is really good it's just not perfect and I really didn't expect it to be for a film from 1984 that's kind of more of a hidden cult classic film um, you can only expect so much from what they did on this restoration and they did a decent job now if you haven't done so yet make sure to go down and give this video a like and a thumbs up for me hit that subscribe button and the bell notification that way you never miss out on any of these exclusive image comparisons early reviews or tons of content that I constantly release every few days here on my YouTube channel. So make sure to go down, give this video a like and a thumbs up for me, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. Now touching on the audio here, this is where there's one more thing that kind of slightly disappointed me. For this release, Shout Factory did a brand new Dolby Atmos mix. Now you also get English Dolby True HD 7.1, a DTS HD Master Audio 4.1 and 2.0 mixes. Now the Dolby Atmos I was excited about because I really enjoy Dolby Atmos. Now if you haven't checked out how to get yourself a reference quality home Dolby Atmos setup, I've reviewed dozens of Dolby Atmos home setups and share what ones are the best and what one personally is one of the best home Atmos setups you can get on a budget. You'll definitely want to go check out and watch that video if you haven't gotten yourself a Dolby Atmos home setup because man, you're really missing out on a great piece of cinema now that really enhances your viewing and listening experience. This was one of those Dolby Atmos mixes though that was not great. It did not move the sound around really well around the room. It did not use the height channels really at all. Um, there were some scenes I thought could have used the height channels easily when there was explosions and the fire going up and things blowing up and going up in the air and gunfire ricocheting out of the buildings and on the rooftops, things like that. They could have done a better job with the Dolby Atmos mix. I wasn't really impressed with the Dolby Atmos mix on it. Now, does it sound better than the previous Blu-rays? Yes. But when it's a Dolby Atmos, I have a standard that I'm looking for for them to use the height channels to move the sound around, to have really good LFE. All of those different things are what I expect out of a good Dolby Atmos mix. This one simply wasn't. It just, it was okay. It just wasn't great. It's not gonna blow you away and it's not gonna be something you say, man, that was just an amazing Dolby Atmos mix. To be honest with you, I really couldn't even really tell that this one was a Dolby Atmos mix because it really sounded just like basically a 5.1 or maybe a 4.1 mix. It, it just really didn't have much range, didn't move things around. Height channels really weren't touched much at all. So it just, overall, the Dolby Atmos was a disappointment. Now showing you what you get in this. You get this nice collector's edition, basically front cover says Shout Select, Streets of Fire. Side, it says Streets of Fire with number 16 on it and Shout Selects Line. Has all of the special features that were on the previous Blu-ray release are included in this, so you're not missing anything on that. Does talk about that it's a new 2023 4K scan, like I explained at the beginning, 
from the original camera negatives, which you can tell right off the bat, as you're noticing those image presentations above, the depth and detail to the image is much more greatly enhanced than it was on the previous Blu-ray because that was a 2K scan. This is a brand new 4K scan from the original camera negatives. Now, something I'm gonna to touch on about the rating here, it does say rated PG. Now, keep in mind, this was right before the ratings had basically changed with like Indiana Jones and Back to the Future, and there were several other films that caused it to change to where they added PG-13. This is rated PG, but to be honest with you, it's more like a hard PG-13 and maybe a light R. It does have strong violence, it has strong language, and it does have some strong sexual content. So keep that in mind when you go into this, it is not a PG, present day PG rated movie. Um, it's not something that I would sit with the kids and watch, obviously, it's not something that I let my kids watch. And there is some scenes that you might wanna be aware of and look into, um, especially if the sexual content is something you don't want to see. You wanna research that before you watch this movie because it is not PG with the sense of what you think of PG nowadays. Now, when you get inside here, you do get your Blu-ray disc, that has your feature film on it, and it is region A locked. Then on this side, you also get your special features disc, again, region A locked. Your 4K disc, which has one of the scenes I'm referencing, actually the picture of it right on it, um, this is actually region free, so you won't have any issues playing this anywhere worldwide for those of you that want to import this or buy this to other countries. I post that direct link from Amazon in the description section and as a pinned comment in the comment section below. That'll ship anywhere worldwide when you click on that link down there below. Obviously that also ships to the US, Canada, Mexico. So that link down there, if you decide you wanna buy this, is the link you're gonna to wanna to use. But this disc is region free. I did all my exclusive testing on this as well. For the rough average bitrate on this, it did have a very healthy and high rough average bitrate of 83 megabits per second. So that was nice. So other than, like I said, the Atmos mix, some of the speckles still being there, the film grain having some fluctuations, and then obviously the missing like millisecond of a scene that's missing that has that glitch. Um, that's basically some of the things you'll encounter watching this. But overall, it's still a definitely big upgrade over the previous Blu-ray because the previous Blu-ray had tons of other issues and just was a poor looking image than what the 4K looks like anyways. Like I said, Streets of Fire is one of those films that if you haven't experienced before and you like 80s films, it's definitely more of a musical, I don't know, kind of like, I wouldn't say grease, but more intense grease with more of an intense story and more stuff in it. More of a kind of like gritty 50s, but kind of like 50s if it never ended type thing mixed with some more modern technology. It's really hard to explain because it doesn't really fit into one category. I will say though, Diane Lane in this with her musical numbers, I really liked those scenes a lot. I think they were really cool, kind of like music videos, kind of like MTV music video styles from the 80s, and I think the music's great in it. The acting though does have some cheesiness in it. There's some cheesy acting, some very cheesy dialogue, and tongue-in-cheek stuff that you just kind of accept for a film from the 80s, but it is one of those that I think it'll surprise you. I mean, William Dafoe in it, he definitely is so over the top in it and extreme that his performance alone really lended to why I think it adds to one of those classic 80s feels for like an action adventure musical. And I think it's definitely one of those that's kind of a cool movie for that sense. So getting to my review score for Streets of Fire on 4K Ultra HD, this gets a very good 8.8. It is not up in the nines that gives you an exact idea what you're looking at visual and sound quality. It's still a big upgrade over the previous Blu-ray. So if you own any of the previous Shout Factory Blu-rays or any of the Blu-rays before Shout Factories, you're definitely gonna notice a big upgrade in this and you're going to enjoy it. But just keep in mind that's where it falls. Quality, audio quality, visual quality, overall value for this set you're looking at an 8.8. It's a good release and one that if you're looking into this film and you haven't seen it before, this is the best way to experience it by far. If you decide you wanted to buy this after hearing my review and my review score, make sure to use that link I've posted from Amazon down in the description section and as a pinned comment in the comment section below. It takes you straight out to Amazon. It never costs you a penny extra when you click on those links, but those do help to support this YouTube channel just a tiny bit. So make sure if you decide you're buying this now to click on those links down there below. 
Let me know if you've seen this film. Is this one of those films you love that you've grown to love and you've seen since the 80s? Or is it one of those films you're ready to experience now and see it in 4K? This is the best way to see it. Don't expect too much out of that Dolby Atmos either. And you might have fun actually when you get it. Go find that scene I was talking about at the beginning of this. Check that scene out at that timestamp I shared so you can see what I'm talking about when I do all of my testing and the things I encounter when I do my testing. So you can kind of see some of the little things I see that are kind of like nitpicky things, but they're things I encounter and notice when I'm doing all of my testing that, as I said, most people never pick up or notice because they don't do side-by-side -side testing like I do and don't deep dive into each of these releases. And that's why what I release in every single one of these exclusive analysis and review videos is so unique. So make sure to go down there, give this video a like and a thumbs up for me, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. If you enjoy all of this time and hard work I put into all of these exclusive reviews, make sure to join my Collector's VIP Club. It always only costs you a couple of bucks every month, less than the price of a cup of coffee, but you get a ton of perks and benefits for joining that, and it drastically makes a difference in me being able to continue to create every one of these videos. I'm only supported by you, my viewers, and subscribers. So make sure to join my Collector's VIP Club or give a super thanks through the super thanks button down below. It's just like giving a tip on each video. Remember, this work, you might get to watch these videos for free, but they are not free for me to make. I spend on average three to four full days making every single one of these exclusive reviews, testing them out, pulling the data off of the disc, which is extremely time consuming and expensive with all of the equipment I have to use to create all of these. So make sure if you enjoy these and you want me to continue creating these, don't wait for somebody else to join the Collector's VIP Club. Make sure that you join the Collector's VIP Club to support the creation of these videos and my YouTube channel. Make sure to start that conversation in the comment section below and let me know how excited you are for this release. If now you're excited to buy it, if you've seen this film before, and if you love the film or what your thoughts are on it, make sure to start that conversation in the comment section below. As always, I truly hope all of you have a blessed day and I've always got something new, early, and exciting coming out very soon.